Hi, everybody. This is Dan Sullivan, and I'm really pleased to be here with Peter Diamandis on our next episode of Exponential Wisdom. And Peter, it seems like every time we're away for a short period of time between podcasts, lots of things happen in the world. One of the things that has always impressed me right from the beginning was your whole moonshot philosophy, the whole concept that if you're going to plan into the future about doing something important, think of it as a moonshot. Could you just start off by just giving us a little background to your thinking, where the terminology comes from, and how you apply it to yourself? Uh, sure. Happily, Dan, and a pleasure to be back on the air with you again. I always love my time with you. So the moonshot is a term that actually comes out of Google. Astro Teller, who's the captain of Moonshots, who heads Google X, was having a conversation with Larry Page, the CEO of Google, and said, you know, what does Google X do? What should we be doing? And it ultimately came out that Google X should be taking moonshots. And it was sort of envisioned as what the Apollo program was, doing something that was daring and big and had a chance of failure. But as they got down to defining it better, what Astro Teller says is, you know, the most of the world is trying to grow incrementally. For most of the world, 10% is a great step. You know, 10% more revenue, 10% lower cost, 10% more customers. And you can get 10% growth by just working harder, you know, working Friday and Saturday, <laughs> squeezing your employees. But a moonshot is where you go 10 times bigger, not 10%. Mm -hmm. The difference between 10% and 10x is 100-fold. Mm -hmm. And so it's the notion of can you set a crazy objective that everybody in the company is saying there's no way that we can grow there linearly. And you're mm -hmm. effectively forcing the company to throw away its previous methodologies of doing things and start with a clean sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. And so I love moonshots. I try and make all of my companies be a moonshot, whether it's planetary resources, going to the asteroids, literally kind of a moonshot, X Prize, solving the world's grand challenges, human longevity, the world's largest genome sequencing facility, or my newest company, Cellularity, which is focused on stem cells as a regenerative agent. And so I think about moonshots a lot. And mm -hmm. one of the realizations I've had is moonshots change over time. Mm -hmm. And you need to be fluid and agile in that regard. Well, one of the things that it immediately reminds me of, and I suspect this really made you very, very resonant with the moonshot idea, was your space shot. I mean, it was really your vision of putting the first private space plane into lower orbit. Suborbital flights, right? Suborbital flight. And I'm always struck by the story. I've watched <laughs> the video, the great Nick Nanton video that he did of you, and just the sheer amount of internal fortitude and kind of being convinced of your vision that it took to actually stay with that through all the obstacles, which included regulatory obstacles and certainly financing obstacles. But that experience, did that sort of prepare the neural synapses in your brain for finding the moonshot almost a very comfortable thought after <laughs> you had been through that yourself? Yeah, it's a good point. I think I'm very lucky that as a child, I got inspired by space. And space is inherently really hard, <laughs> and it's really risky, and the chances of failure are high. And all of these things basically drive this need to believe in moonshots and take moonshots. Yeah. So I had a dream about spaceflight. I had a dream that I wanted to go myself. And when I convinced myself, I think pretty accurately, that my chances of becoming a NASA astronaut were less than one in a thousand. I had to face the fact that I was either going to give up on space or have to find some other way to do it. I had mm -hmm. to start with a clean sheet of paper because the traditional method wasn't going to happen. I think a lot of moonshots come as a result of that saying, you know, where I want to go isn't going to happen at the course and pace we're going with the people we have, with the technology we have. I need to go 10 times bigger and do it completely differently. So that led to me learning about incentive prizes from Charles Lindbergh's book, creating a $10 million prize and so forth. And I did get comfortable with the idea that, listen, anything big and bold is going to be hard. You know, you and I have talked on previous podcasts about 
this idea of a massively transformative purpose, an MTP. Mm-hmm. And I realized that if my heart and soul is in this thing, then I have a shot. Maybe not a good one, but I have a shot. So what I tell people looking for their moonshots is you first have to figure out what your MTP is. What is your purpose on life? What is your massively transformative purpose? Because at three o'clock in the morning, when I think the French term is the shit is hitting the fan, unless you've got the emotional fortitude to keep going, you'll give up Mm -hmm. and you lose by not going forward. Yeah. So just two things that you said, one about Google and one about yourself. There's a kind of very, very fundamental truth telling that really has to start at the beginning of the moonshot process in the sense that your normal way of thinking about going into space through NASA, you had to tell the truth about that. So there was a fundamental telling the truth. And that actually released your mind, I think, if you look back. It actually, you knew it was going to be something other than the normal channels, the normal route. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It started with telling the truth. And you teach us that at Strategic Coach all the time. You know, any progress begins by telling yourself the truth. And that's so fundamentally true. Yeah. Because if I kept on believing the lie that, yeah, I'll eventually get into NASA and so forth, I would never, the easier route would have been to just apply and apply and apply and hope and hope and hope. But that's not a strategy. That's not a way of making it happen. But insofar as the Google, I mean, you've been in touch with the whole Google project for a very long time. Did you notice a shift in the way things were being approached on their projects just because of this new framework? So, yeah, I mean, if you look at it, and I've had the pleasure of knowing Larry Page for the last 14 years and Astro Teller for the last probably eight, but Larry and Sergey both are extraordinarily brilliant, very smart, very ambitious, and they found themselves at a relatively young age with a massive cash engine from AdSense, the selling advertising against search products. That idea of a huge amount of cash and they don't believe in dividending the cash so their goal was what do we reinvest it in and can we create products and projects and services that can change the world and that can make as much money as advertising can Mm -hmm. so we diversify because you know i teach this to all the ceos out there everyone's core business eventually goes to zero Mm -hmm. right microsoft doesn't make any more money on dos that's gone right so larry is very famously, he came to my founding conference for Singularity University. I'd invited him. I had seen him that morning. I said, why don't you come along? He got up on stage. And I'll never forget, he said, I have a simple metric in the world right now. Are you doing something that can change the world? Mm-hmm. Yes or no? And he goes on to say, 99.999999999% of the people, it's no. Yes. So living in this world where we have all this capital, all this technology, yeah. all these resources, What the hell are you doing to change the world? What is your moonshot that makes you alive here on this planet? So you've been around project planners all your life because of the technology work and the scientific work. I often wonder, because of your view of this, you probably can detect in new investment possibilities, new technological initiatives, whether there's actually a moonshot thinking actually present in it or it's not. And I just wondered if that's either, if it's there, it's a positive checkoff point that you can go deeper with this as far as your interest. And if you don't detect it, it's sort of a turnoff. It's not going to go anywhere because they're not thinking big enough. Yeah, it's so true. And I do this in my own companies. Mm -hmm. I'm on my 18th company right now. And the companies where I've stopped being CEO and there's another CEO there and I serve as chairman yeah. or executive chairman, I'm constantly pushing and saying, how are we going to disrupt ourselves? Yeah. How are we going to disrupt ourselves this year? What is our moonshot going to be? Because as soon as you relax and you're fat, dumb and happy on the business that you have, you're dead. Yeah. If you've got a good business, that is, because other people are going to try and take it away from you in a much more aggressive fashion, unless you're constantly reinventing yourself. So that is something, if I could, one of the things I learned in coach is the idea of these thinking tools. Mm -hmm. One of the thinking tools that I created at the start of this year, I'm actually going to use it at Abundance 360 in a couple of weeks, is what I call the five-year moonshot planner. And Mm -hmm. if you don't mind, I'd like to describe it to you and chat about it. Yeah, absolutely. 
Maybe there's a chance to actually give a link to people yeah. you know, at the end of this so that they can actually download the five-year moon planner, Yum. So when I put on this planner and I'm looking at it here, the first question is, what is your five-year moonshot? What is your 10x goal? Mm -hmm. The reason I said a five-year moonshot versus a 10-year moonshot or a two-year moonshot is I think humans tend to work in five-year cycles. Five years is far enough out that you can allow for some magic to happen. Mm -hmm. And if I said, you know, what's your two-year moonshot, it becomes so critically present right now that you are restrictive on your mind of mm -hmm. what you can think you can do in two years. If I said 10 years, it's so far out that you really can't imagine 10 years out that easily. Five years feels very comfortable. So mm -hmm. what I do is I go for each of my companies every January and I sit down and I say, okay, for X prize or for planetary resources, what is my five year moonshot goal? Where am I gonna go 10 times bigger in five years than I am today? Mm -hmm. What's a project, a product, a service, a reimagination of the company? Uh, just a question here, is this a running five years or is it a fixed five years? It's a running five years. So every year I reimagine what the five-year goal is. Okay, good. So that it's a fresh exercise because the world changes. Yes. My abilities, my assets, my knowledge changes. So the moonshot I sent last January might not be as valid this January, but it will inform me. Mm -hmm. But it's constantly trying to go realistically, where am I going 10x bigger? Yes. The next question is, what concrete objective can you achieve this year mm -hmm. that would put you on your moonshot schedule? So I'll use a couple of examples here. Let's see, for XPRIZE, so my five-year moonshot goal for XPRIZE is that every year I want 10 million people around the world to submit their top grand challenge that they want solved. So I want 10 million people, all ages, all nationalities around the world to click on a link and submit, I want to solve women's and children's violence. I want to solve water, healthcare, whatever it might be. And then I want those 10 million people to then vote up and then rank order them. Mm -hmm. So that at the end of this process, we have a understanding from the world of what the world wants solved. Yes. So that's my five-year moonshot. I really, I'm going to make that happen. I call it global visioneering. My one-year goal, you know, what is the concrete objective I can get done this year? What I said is I want to get a global digital partner like Google or Facebook to agree to promote this process. So imagine mm -hmm. one day, October 1st of every year, under the Google search bar, it says, what is the grand challenge you want solved most? Click here enter your email and your grand challenge, and that gets put into a database. And then we'll use an AI to group them and rank them and then go back out and say, okay, vote on your top three and then it ranks, stacks, orders. And so that I can know, wow, look at this, teenage girls in Japan, this is their top goal. Mm -hmm. White guys at 40 years old in New York, this is their, their top goal. Mm -hmm. And then the next question on the Moonshot Planner, after we've established the one-year objective, which can be a concrete step that if I achieve that, I'm on process for my five-year goal. And then I ask the next question. I say, what three concrete objectives can you achieve this month that will put you on your one-year goal? Mm -hmm. And for me, it set up a meeting with Marcus, my CEO, and Jen Bravo, who heads Visioneering, and get their buy-in on this, write up a concept in detail, and then assemble a team and get that team to support me in implementation. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll go sit down with Lorraine Tuhill, who's CMO at Google, and take it from there. Well, as a lifetime tool maker, I love it. Yeah, thanks, pal. <laughs> yeah. That, means a, that means a lot to Yeah, me. well, you're chunking, you know. I mean, there's uh, being ADD myself and having actually, you know, involved myself with Daniel Amen. One of the big problems with ADD people is that they see too much all at the same time and they get paralyzed by what they see. And the number one thing is to get them to pick one thing and then to chunk it down to immediate right. actions that they can actually take. And I don't know if the people are all ADD who are going to do this, but we live in kind of an ADD world where we're getting inputted with an enormous amount of distracting information 
I think this is beautiful, and it's so simple, and you can see how someone, let's say if you had the Google day where they put this out, you can see that there would be an enormous amount of response to it, you know? Yeah. And then they can do deep data analytics exactly. on the answers, and you can see things that people really have very strong emotions for and very, very strong sentiments for all over the world. And then we can bring the top voted ones to global sponsors and say, look, 33% of the world wants this problem solved. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the kind of imagery you're using on your communications and the kind of wording that you're using, this is extraordinarily valuable. You're using kind of the vision of sort of a collective on the planet to kind of create forward imagery of what people really are heading towards. Absolutely. So I commend it to everybody if you are thinking about a moonshot, if mm -hmm. a moonshot is something that you would like to do, it's not hard to start. Mm -hmm. You just have to know what you're passionate about mm -hmm. and set a goal. I recommend five years out mm -hmm. that is 10 times bigger than what you're doing today that inspires you. Mm -hmm. And then basically, what's a step up, right? If it's an exponential mm -hmm. growth curve to get there. And so at the end of one year, you haven't actually gone 10x, you might have gone a half X in the course of one year, and then it doubles and doubles and doubles until you get to 10 X. And then what are the first three steps? Because when you do those steps, you're gaining momentum. You got momentum on your way to that goal. For me, I like chunking things into threes. It works something I can remember and I can follow my plan. Yep. We started our working relationship. We're in our fifth year of it. And the thing that I, I love about it is you're saying, you know, up until now, we've just been thinking in terms of additive progress going into the future, and we have to think about multiplier future. Exponential means things multiplying and multiplying their own growth, and it just seems to me like such a fundamental entry point that anyone could get involved with. You know, there may be, you know, people in Botswana who are on the web one day, and they look at this, and they say, oh, this... I'm going to participate in this. All of a sudden, they're part of a global conversation on exponential thinking, but it's just in terms of what they personally want. It's great. This has been, I think, a great podcast, and hopefully this inspires people to think about moonshots. Dan, something that you and I have talked about a lot in the past is the changing world of democracies and governance and how governments work and how voting works and how exponential technologies are going to be impacting that. Maybe that'd be a fun conversation for our next podcast. What do you think? Yeah, I love that, you know, because I've been a political junkie since 1952. So, and I'm uh, the exact opposite. <laughs> I've got about 64 years of processing on this one subject. So thanks for giving me a opportunity to talk about this. I love it. Great. All right, Dan, see you on the next podcast. Thank you, Peter. Take care, pal. Bye.